Hello everyone, we are here with the first of this new series of How's Your Ascension Going? So we have John Chadwick with us today and he has uh, a very interesting story which is one that is not dissimilar to the story that we'll all be doing in some way or another. So John, how are you today? I'm doing wonderful, thanks. He's doing wonderful, okay. So do you want to start back where, at the beginning? Um, the beginning, let's see, I, I was, we had a small uh, health clinic, I had just started going, so Reiki Center, just started in the course, things were progressing nicely, I was getting ready for my final exam, I uh, thought it was going to be pretty easy, and suddenly my entire clinic and everything fell apart in such a way that it seemed to be almost choreographed with the course, with the, the, the final ultimate ending coming right during when I was supposed to be attending the final seminar <laughs> with you. So it, it really turned into a complete three-dimensional course that just, it was like going, it stepped out of fantasy into reality. It became my life, actually. Okay. So, yeah, I remember so, you emailed me and that this was falling apart and that was falling apart and the other was ending and the other was ending. And so it was just all dovetailed at once for you. Exactly. And so how did you deal with that where all these secure areas of your life were literally crumbling around you? How did you deal with that? At first, I went a little crazy, and I was just just a little overwhelmed, and it was so wonderful talking to everybody in the class, because almost every single person, without fail, had a similar feelings of being overwhelmed. So once I felt that, I said, all right, it's not just me. I'm not crazy. It's not me that can't handle it. I've, I've got to remember everything I've learned. So what I started to do was start to just little by little put things together, and just, I left everything. I just basically spent the whole summer just finding myself, going off, riding my bike 10 miles a day to the bay, meditating, and just being thankful for the few things I was left with that made sense in life, and starting right there. Well, you know, that's that's really good, because that is, that brings up another point, and the point is, as we really go through whatever process we choose, or chooses us, where we are really expanding our consciousness and going into higher frequencies of ourself. What happens is that higher light, it comes in and it's like a rotor rooter And it goes through all of these, okay, you're done with this, you're done with this, you're done with this, you don't need this, you don't need this. This is a waste of your precious time. These are out. And so at first it feels like free fall. Like what? What's happening? And this is that place where we have to learn to let go. So why don't you talk a little bit about your letting go process? Because it seems like you did that very well and naturally. I mean, of course, the freak out is yeah. part of the letting go. It just, it basically, I decided I had I, I didn't have a plan. I had everything and it just went. I had all my eggs in one basket. The basket fell. I didn't know what to do. So I just had no expectations and just said, I'm just going to go ride out just to nature, just to meditate, just to keep my sanity because I have nothing else to do. There is nothing. So I just started to build on the little bit I had. And then every day it just became kind of a routine. And I started looking forward to instead of just somewhere to, to escape to, it was, it was somewhere to look forward to want to go. And I noticed that just a simple hour ride turned into a four hours a day of just, just an I, my whole day revolved around it, and it, it, it's, I started to notice things I hadn't noticed before, little things. I mean, if you see the same thing, I guess, day after day, eventually, if you're, if you're keeping an open mind, it'll, you'll see past the initial, and you'll start to look deeper. And that's what started to happen, was things started to have a deeper meaning, but it was gradual. It was day after day after day for a couple months <laughs> of just slow and steady. Well, you know, it is really good because what happened, I mean, I'm sure you had a certain degree of freak out because that's part of releasing it from our body and from our life. But what you did is that you just said, okay, it's gone. So I'm going to do what I want to do now. And what you wanted to do was actually really important because you got really grounded because you were riding your bike all over everywhere. And as you were riding your bike, 
And by the way, we were just through your area and it's beautiful, beautiful bike paths and, you know, all through the different um, parks and everything and beautiful. So you got to like be with Gaia and see what is really important. And also you became very, very grounded because you ha you're riding a bike. So you had to keep your balance. You know, you had to learn to balance your life. And what are the other things that you learned from your bicycle? What else did your bike teach you? Uh, perseverance, just to, to keep going when you initially get tired and your legs are sore and, and your rear end's killing you. If you give up then, that's, you'll, you'll, if you just keep riding past that initial, you'll get your second wind and you'll feel you can go even further, almost that rider's kind of high. You'll, you'll get to another level. If you give up, you will not get to that level. But if you, so it kind of gets you. You know what? I feel like stopping, but I've learned if I go for another five minutes, it will clear itself out, and I'll reach another level. So, and it was it was that just setting little things in in front of me to look forward to little incentives. So, how did you learn that? You said you learned exactly. How did you learn that if you just keep if you just push through it? You know, if you push through this invisible barrier, which had been your limit in the past, probably, right? Uh -huh. And so you were moving on to a whole new, you know, you were, you were letting go of that yeah, limit. You were I letting didn't care. I reached a point where it was, I was in a mood and I was tired, but I didn't care that I was tired. I just kept riding. And it's, I guess I never done that before. I cared enough to say, "Oh, I'm sore. I'm going to stop." I didn't care because I, I just my mind was was a little confused, and I didn't care if I was sore. I just needed to ride. And through that, I guess I experienced, "Oh my gosh, what was that? <laughs> Holy cow!" So okay, so you didn't care. That's an important point. Okay, that didn't care part. Can you talk about that a little bit? Because at, that's really significant because we get to this place where um, we get to that. I don't care. I There is something bigger and more important happening here. I'm not sure what it is, but I can't stop. So can you talk a little bit about how that was for you specifically? Uh, sure. That, that would be the, the letting go part where there's just so many things that I, I thought were important. I was basing my life around and then they were just, they were just gone. And then you look and you're like, well, how important could they have been if I'm still here and I'm still here, but they're not there. And then you just, you start doing that in everything in your life. You start looking at everything and you just question and then you just, you lose the interest in it. It's, it's, it loses its, its grip on you. You no longer feel compelled to do what you did. You, you're letting go of it. You, the not caring means you're, you're caring more about something bigger and it's so tiny. Well, my legs hurting. That's nothing right now because my mind is hurting. And that's the most important. Uh, yes. Your priority shifted. My priority shifted from the little things that were annoying me to the big things that I just had to, to come to answers to. And there was a degree of betrayal within your loss, wasn't there? Or, oh, yes. Uh, that, so let's yeah, talk a little bit. Theme through my life almost, so it really put a pointer on stopping to say I've been a victim for all these years and to finally realize, you know, hey, I've learned so much. I've come so far. I'm not a victim in any of this. I chose all of this. Oh, hooray. This is to teach me. This is it to make me be bitter and carry around the burdens. So I let go of that too. I let go of uh, being a victim. I let go of just, just everything. And I was just a guy riding a bike <laughs> and <laughs> just wouldn't stop for some silly reason. He didn't know why. <laughs> Okay, so now let's take a moment and identify that reason, and then we'll go into what you've learned since then, which is like, and what's happened since then, which is quite amazing. So that you didn't know why, you just kind of went by blind faith, right? That so there was some little thing inside of you that said, "Just get on your bike and ride, and don't stop riding." Mm -hmm. So how did you know Nothing when you? Nothing else to do. It felt like that was the only answer. <laughs> right? How did you feel like? All right, this is enough. I can stop now. Where did, how did you get to that place? I mean, in each ride. It is, well, I go to the bay and it's a, uh, it's, it's, it's five miles on a dirt road and the wind picks up 20, 30, 40 miles, depending mm -hmm. on the day. You're just, you're moving maybe two or three miles an hour. You're fighting. And I, at first I could only make it about two miles. And then one day I said, I was going to go all the way. And when I made it there, 
I mean, that's it. I was at the foot of the bed. You couldn't ride anymore. But then you just you got to see everything. You could see all the way to San Jose, all the way to San Francisco, all the way to Peninsula. I could see Google, Yahoo. I could see everything, all the bridges. And it was just, I could spend as much time as I wanted. I was the only one there. Nobody else was there. And so that's how it was my reward. Yes, that was your reward. So you could, I mean, it is marvelous to uh, walk around there and be around there. It's beautiful. And of course, I'm addicted to the ocean, like I'm sure you are. And so just seeing the ocean from different perspectives is enough to make you feel better. Um, all right. So now, what has happened since then? I, as I started the, the rides and everything, you know, each day, things would open up more and more and things that I didn't find that important suddenly became important. I would notice birds and I would notice certain uh, insects, dragonflies, and occasionally some would even follow me. So I was riding my bike. I'd look over my shoulder and see a shadow and there'd be a dragonfly with me for a quarter of a mile, half a mile, just flying about five feet, the same spot right off of my shoulder, just kind of guiding me. And as I, I started riding and paying attention to little things, I'd come up and birds would see me ahead and they'd fly to the next stoop, wait till I got there and fly. Oh, yeah, wow. It was, it was tiny things, but it was just enough to think, you know what? They're doing that for me. They, there's a message there or something. It, and the more I started to look, the more I saw. That Yes. And let me take a moment and tell you about the symbolism of a dragonfly. A dragonfly goes through three processes of transmutation. So when you have a dragonfly follow you, it is telling you that you are transmuting. Awesome. And so the bird that was singing to you, what did the bird say? It was redhead and it was bold and it was it was be bold. It was just be, be bold. Be you be don't don't worry how you look. If you look bold, if you are bold, be it. <laughs> Absolutely. And so as you were with nature like that on a regular basis, you began to, you know, communicate with nature. Because we all can. I mean, there's the elements and the elementals and all the different animals. But we have to know none of these beings speak English, so we have to learn their language. The trees, I felt whenever I got tired, I would go up against the biggest tree. They would eat one of them. I would go and I'd say, sorry, I don't have time for you. On my ride back, as I was passing, I completely forgot the thought would pop in my head. And I went, hey, you reminded me. And I'd pull over to the tree and sit up against it and uh, gather its energies. And you're right. It almost felt like it yes. was communicating with me. No, they, it, all life does communicate. And as we expand our consciousness, such as you were doing, I mean, when you go into that type, you, you had to go into a trance to push through all of these great physical challenges. And so that very trance that allowed you to push through the physical challenges raised your consciousness to that point that you were actually communicating with all of nature that was around you. Beautiful. Uh, it, was, it was. That makes sense. It just Yes, because since then, everything has just seemed lighter. And it's, yes. it's just, I've really, I've, yeah. <laughs> and, and you emailed me and you told me about a few things that had happened to you recently. You would like to share those? Oh, sure. I've, I've also been, been taking pictures of, of chemtrails and things like that for years. And in the last couple months since I've been riding, I have noticed things that I have never in my life before seen. And they, I almost started predicting when things started happening. Uh -huh. You can see clouds actually being created. I'd take my camera out and you'd see a little dot and it would get bigger and bigger. And it would go on to another one and bloop, there's a whole big line of clouds. And after a half, they were black. And after a half hour, all white clouds going along. And I'd look at all those and I'd, I'd see uh, the jets come by and leave the trails, but they'd fly straight up from behind the mountain. And I'd go, you know, only thing behind the mountain is, uh, you know, a reservoir. They must have the machinery up behind there. Uh -huh. Well, one day I noticed all the clouds. I figured out exactly what it probably was. There was a barge out in the water, which shouldn't be in the middle of a bay. <laughs> yes. Federal land. But it was right there offshore of Google and everything. So as I go home, I find out they closed that park. 
at one o'clock in the afternoon because of lightning alerts. It might lightning at night, so the entire park was evacuated Aww. because it might lightning. The exact park where I figured would be the only entrance to where the machinery was kept. But later Aww. that night, it was like a giant Tesla coil was turned on. The ground was used, and lightning over a thousand strikes went from cloud to cloud all night long. It, towards that general vicinity. I rode to the net bay the next day. The barge was gone. Uh, all, most of the clouds are gone. I've also noticed many days a week there's a super cloud. Wide, 30 to 40 miles long, goes from over top of Silicon Valley, Google and all that, straight over to Lawrence Livermore Labs, which is known for atomic testing and weather uh -huh. control. And it goes right over top of my house. And I used to come back from these things just panicked that, my goodness, all this weather control is going on. There's nothing I can do. They're going to kill us all. They're over top of my house. I've got kids. I've got... And then I slowly started to remember what you said in your classes, that all of us were here in our Pacific region for a reason. Yeah. And it started to dawn on me. If I wasn't out meditating and I wasn't out seeing this, I, I wouldn't be seeing it. I, I'd be like everybody else, just driving around, having no clue what's going on. So then I started to realize, instead of the fear, I need to put in the unconditional love and to send it. And as each day I started to do that, I saw them, it, it's like they became more and more. But I wasn't fearing it anymore. Oh, so it was perfect. like I was being led into the secrets because I wasn't fearful of them anymore. And I just would be privileged to more and more things as I'm standing there. I'm looking up going, I can't believe this is actually occurring right now. And so I've learned just instead of the panicking to send the love into it. And since then, I've just felt so happy and so wonderful because I know this is my job to be happy, to be joyful, to send this love up into these clouds over my head. And who knows what they're doing for what nefarious purpose, but somebody's got to counterbalance it. If nobody in the country knows this is going on, but a handful of people, it's up to us handful of people now to do something. And, Thank goodness I've, I've been to the course to learn, because otherwise I just would be running around sounding an alarm, making everybody else panic that the sky is yes. falling. The sky yes. <laughs> yes, and you would be judged by having, you know, going around saying There's the sky is falling. Around, uh huh. Exactly. Like <laughs> and, and also, what you did is that you realized that it was actually an honor that yes. you were chosen. Yes. Um, to be able to see now this is part of what your mission is so you know and so what happens is we say okay i'm ready to serve gaia i i am ready to be an active participant in the process of planetary ascension and so once we start making that decree then everything that's in the way of that decree's got to go right uh, because it's a distraction. And so then we go through our different freaking outs. But after we freak out that it's gone, or if we've done it enough times, you just go, okay, well, that's one of the first things I'm just letting go. And that's really great to get to that place because I did various freaking outs before. I said, okay, initiation here, you know. And when we bring in, whenever we bring in higher light, then that goes to our body and pulls up any remaining darkness right into our conscious perception of, of our reality or of our and of ourself. And so we have to say, okay, well, it's cleanup time. And as we go through that cleanup time, we really begin this process of vast change, such as you. And then suddenly our mission is like right there. Because we have cleared out all the I can'ts, you know, such as I, I couldn't begin to ride my bike that long, that far, that high, that low. Yes, you could. So you went through a series of I can'ts and wow, I can. And so then when you got to that I can place, then your mission came in. Oh, understood. So yes. it happened it's, uh, the physical way. It's, it's symbolic of the other. Also, in yes. higher levels, higher dimensions, you're just seeing a mirror, that's how it's coming to me in the third dimension. That is awesome. <laughs> and yeah. it makes sense to, to, to look at it and to figure it out that way. That way, you're building towards them. I definitely, things feel lighter now all around me. I've just, I mean, I'm, I haven't seen what they've done to the weather in, since the last two months. So they, they couldn't have done it six months ago. Everything's lighter. I, I 
see halos around flames sometimes. I'll see smoke do different things. It's, things are getting lighter. I can tell, but I wouldn't notice it if I wasn't looking for it. Yeah. Since I'm slowed down, if I was just, I'd no, my wife, nobody else sees it. But since I'm looking for it, I'm noticing the small signs that I normally wouldn't have seen. Yes, when we're when we're head down, nose to the grindstone, we miss all of that. But when we say no, uh, I'm looking up. I'm living up. I am that higher frequency of myself. Suddenly, our consciousness shifts, and when our consciousness shifts, then our perceptions shift, and when our perceptions shift, our entire reality shifts. That's right. And you are an example of that. So it's what I just I just, you you emailed all of a sudden out of the blue I had a, a, a great guy yesterday come out of nowhere with a Buddhist site I've never heard of that has really helped my understanding so it's like think people are going okay he's ready for this information somebody will send it to him and it's it's wonderful to walk around all day thankful knowing this is going to be a wonderful day I when I'm ready to learn today <laughs> oh that is a great way to look at it so thank you so very much for sharing your process and being honest with it and uh, because all more and more people are going to be doing this more and more so is there anything you want to say in closing here I just wanted to thank you so much for this class I wasn't even sure of coincidences how I even found out about it didn't even know what to expect what it was going to be and it exceeded anything I could have ever dreamed of it turned into not only a class it turned into teaching me about my life. <laughs> yes. So it is, if anybody is ever interested in having an experience that will change your life, this would be it. I definitely would <laughs> say this is it. Yes, and I remember when somehow we were on the phone or something before the class and you were rushing around with your, you know, rushing life <laughs> and thinking, well, I don't know if I have time and blah, blah, blah. But you just, something inside said, no, I'm doing it. It doesn't I, fit. I had just described, been reading you for months, and I just found out you had a, I didn't even know you had the class. I called you just to say, hi, I'm supposed to be calling you for some reason. And you went, oh, the class. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, yeah, I, it's wonderful to be, just to be, have everything fall into place. I mean, just, so you, you lose doubt. After you start to see it enough, and you're telling me that it's going to happen, and I see it start to happen, and, you just, and it just continues to happen. It's just, just wonderful. It's self-validating. It's, it's, it's amazing. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And we will be having another class again soon. So awesome. that is wonderful. And hope you can join us as we're moving up and along uh, for everybody, not just uh, John, but anyone. So thank you so much and have a great day, John. Thank you.